Hey there fellow tennis junkies, today we're going to be reviewing the Dunlop CX200. I was excited to take a look at the Dunlop CX200 whenever I got the opportunity. The red racket endorsed by Kevin Anderson is one that has caught my eye since its release. The X line of rackets is supposed to be for players needing control in their game. The thin beam of the racket is oriented for the control, similar to a Wilson blade. It has a 98 square inch head size with a 16 by 19 string pattern and it's slightly tighter in the middle for more control. Unstrung, the racket comes in at 305 grams or 10.8 ounces. Looking at the specs alone, this racket should fit my game style almost perfectly. I love a 98 square inch head size for more control while keeping a 16 by 19 string pattern so that I can get just a little bit of help with spin. Oddly enough, from just the first few ground strokes, I noticed this racket is actually very high powered, at least for me. I recently have been playing with the Yonex V-Core 95, which is very low powered and that could be affecting my opinion. And this is the very first Dunlop racket I've ever played with. But whenever I got back on the baseline and started to hit the ball as hard as I could, I noticed that it just came off the string bed a lot faster than normal and I kind of struggled to keep the ball in the court. The shots that I normally love hitting like big forehands or the big one-handed backhand up the line became unwieldy and I really struggled to keep it in the court and going wherever I wanted it to go. I thought this racket would feel more like a Wilson blade, but it more so felt like a head speed. You could swing it through the air very quickly, and while you can control it, if you can keep yourself under control, it has a lot of pop coming off the string bed. And I did get a good amount of spin with the 16 by 19 string pattern, but not more than, I'm, than any other racket with that same string pattern. And I was kind of disappointed in it, just from the typical ground strokes and short little rallies that I've had here. After those initial first impressions, I really started to understand what the racket wanted to do. It seemed as though it really wanted to be a fast swinging racket, more similar to like I said before a head speed or even a pure drive. While I think it's a good frame for those aggressive baseliners, it's really hard to keep under control if you yourself struggle to stay under control. Even though it's oriented for a control player, it really didn't feel that way, but as time went on, I kind of settled in a little bit on the rallies and learned to put a little bit more spin on my shots, and I really, it really allowed myself to swing out on the ball just because of how quickly the racket seemed to fly through the air. Since it's not that heavy of a frame coming in at 10.8 ounces unstrung, I really felt like whenever you went for it, and you really tried to swing through the air on like say an Nadal kind of forehand where you whip up really high or something like that it felt really 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 comfortable so if you're a big spin player you'll probably love this racket you'll be able to get tons of spin just due to the swing speed being as high as possible you can just swing as hard and as fast as you can imagine but you do have to keep in mind that the racket is the ball is going to come off a little bit faster than you probably are used to for those heavier hitters. A big part of this is going to be the string that you put in the racket. I initially strung this with Dunlop Explosive Power 17 gauge at 52 pounds. I think a big part of why I struggled to keep the ball in the strings for so long was because of the string. 
but this is kind of the string that Dunlop is recommending for the racket and that could just be because of the red cosmetic. Bigger hitters will enjoy the racket from the baseline, especially if you just love to grind out points. But I do think you should be stringing it a little bit tighter than normal just to kind of help out with that control just a little bit. With serving, I almost had an opposite experience. While my serve is normally pretty big, coming in around 115 to maybe 120 on my flat serves, I really struggled to get some pop on the serves, and I thought it was kind of strange since I was getting so much pop on the ground strokes. I don't know what was causing that, and that could have been a technical thing with just me and not even with the racket, but I really felt like whenever I went for the spin shots, the curve shots, the angles, whatever, it may be on the serves, everything but the flat serves, they felt really, really good. I, I was able to control it beautifully with the serve. Um, I was able to hit my spots and really set myself up to play pretty solid points, but I did struggle on those flat ones, and I can't really pinpoint what it could have been, but if, if you're a big server or if you really enjoy those little angle serves or the trying to hit the little dimes on, on the court, um, this is going to be a great serving racket for you. But if you heavily rely on your power serves, on your flat serves, and you don't typically hit a lot of kick or angle shots or sliders with your serves, you're probably not going to enjoy hitting serves with this frame. Unless I was just a fluke example, um, the flat serves really didn't feel that comfortable and I saw myself just kind of falling into those kick serves or angle shots. I definitely fall into that category of player who really relies on my flat serve and power serve and points and matches. Being six foot six and left handed, that's my biggest strength. So with this racket, I did enjoy being able to hit the massive kick serves and that sort of thing, but my hitting partner Cade really had no problem returning them. And in, in terms of match play and that sort of thing, not being able to hit a flat serve consistently or even just feel comfortable hitting a flat serve is a big issue for me and that's kind of part of the reason why I was a little bit disappointed in this racket. While it is a control oriented racket I've never really felt this with any other frame and again I don't understand why it felt that way compared to the ground strokes which I felt like were really high powered so this could have been a fluke thing but just something to watch out for if you're going to be demoing the racket. Point play was definitely interesting. My game style is a lot more aggressive than most, and I typically like to stay at the baseline unless I'm playing doubles. I felt as though I could really slap the ball from the back, um, but whenever I was coming in on those approach shots um, and came in on the net, I did struggle a little bit, and that's not all the racket's fault, but I did feel a little bit uncontrolled on those approach shots. It was hard to just create a ton of spin and just create a good approach rather than hitting it hard. The swing style is so fast that from the baseline felt great. I was able to swing out on the ball, get tons of spin, but whenever I had to hit those little short angle shots and things like that, I did struggle to keep it under control. Returns were definitely the outlier with this whole play test. I loved returns the most out of every single shot that I hit with this racket. I felt as though I could control it, hit out on it, do whatever I wanted with the ball for the most part. I was able to rip it if I really wanted to or do some little chips or drop shots or whatever it may be. This is where I think the racket really shined for me. 
While my hitting partner Cade's serve is pretty good, it doesn't come with a lot of speed, but it does come with tons of spin and kick to it. I was able to bring the ball down, put my own pace, put my own spin on it. And that's something I haven't really been able to do with a racket comfortably in a long time. Um, I've always struggled with my returns and with this racket I really felt like it helped me out a lot. Just being able to push the ball wherever I wanted to if I had to or if I really wanted to swing out on it I could. And a big part of this could be due to the swing style with the, the quick swing speed. Just because if I wanted to swing with a full backswing on the return I was able to because of how quickly it, it went through the air. Or if I wanted to just chip and block it, I was able to just kind of stick the racket out and stick the return and just redirect his shot. Lastly, I would really recommend this racket to anyone who loves playing the baseline but needs just a little bit of extra pop to come off the string bed. And those who really enjoy placement on serves and serve and volleying and that sort of thing. I think that if you hit pretty hard, you're probably going to struggle to use this one unless you're a big spin player. But overall, I was I was surprised with the Dunlop playtest and I did enjoy using the racket. It definitely wasn't for my personal game style, but I was surprised having never used a Dunlop racket before. Hope you guys enjoyed the playtest. And make sure you drop a comment below on what racket you want to see next or what string you might want to see next. And I'll definitely put that in my queue for videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.